war began this week with the two teams involved in war games, Team Cody and Team Judgment Day coming face to face. Judgment Day were trying to get under the babyface's skin by saying like Seth Rollins couldn't beat Cody Rhodes. Sami Zayn, Seth, Cody, you all had your opportunities squandered by Jey Uso in the name of his bloodline. But it would turn out to all come back to the Judgment Day as Damian Priest declared himself the leader of the Judgment Day. And just look at the face on Finn Balor here. The look he's given Damian Priest. All the issues we saw between the two before seem to have gone away until Damian declared himself leader. We'd go from this to a tag match, which was really cool to see Dominic and JD versus Sammy and Seth opponents last week. Partners this week, just as Seth looked like he was about to put away the match. Judgment Day's Finn and Priest would get involved. The typical Judgment Day babyface brawl was on and Adam Pearce had enough. He said the tag title main event was so big that fans deserved better. So Seth, Sammy, Dom and JD McDonough are all banned from ringside. In fact, they're banned from the arena. No help for Finn and Damien tonight. Judgment Day would kind of acknowledge Damien Priest as the leader after Rhea Ripley kind of pushed the narrative. They would then say they wanted to invite JD to become a full-time member of Judgment Day. And it finally actually happened. I thought something else might have happened here, but instead he got the jacket and everything. Him and Dom had to leave very quickly. But JD is now in Judgment Day. Well, the main event for the tag team titles kept getting a little bit chaotic, as to be expected. There was brawls galore. We'd even see Cody Rhodes' head break the actual LED ring post. You don't see that often in WWE. But I feel like most people saw the outcome of this match coming as Drew McIntyre appeared, hitting Jey Uso with a claymore, allowing Judgment Day to retain the tag team titles. The hill turn is complete. Drew McIntyre shook hands with Rhea Ripley. Drew McIntyre may not be in Judgment Day, but he's definitely working with them as we head towards War Games. How will this change everything for next week with the Advantage match coming up next week? Oh boy. This is Things You Might Have Missed from Monday Night Raw. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. Shinsuke Nakamura had another one of his backstage promos this week. A lot of people again reading into this that it could be CM Punk. I, this this tonight didn't scream CM Punk to me, but it does seem like he's waiting for someone to return. Again, he would face off against a member of the Alpha Academy in Otis. He would defeat Otis with three Kinshasas. And of course, they set up a match for next week with Chad Gable. So he's going through each like member of Alpha Academy, getting those wins. But what is the plan for Nakamura? Next week, if he issues an open challenge, that's it. All bets are off. It's got to be CM Punk, right? Rhea Ripley and Zoe Stark came face to face tonight. Of course, they will clash at Survivor Series. Zoe would get the better of Rhea Ripley, sending Mummy backstage shook. Rhea Ripley, really good promo from her, putting over Zoe, listing her accomplishments, saying that she saw her in NXT and that she will be a future champion, just saying that Zoe had to go to a different show to be a champion. Because on the show that Rhea's on, Mummy's always on top. Cody Rhodes, Dog Pharaoh, has a new plush toy available right now on WWE Shop. That's got to be a top seller, hasn't it? WWE has released the official rules for War Games. No real big changes this year, but very interesting. Gunther would try and get into the mind of The Miz tonight. Can't blame him, obviously, setting up for that big Survivor Series Intercontinental title match. But in the background, you can see Nikki Cross once again, just staring off into space. She actually posted a video onto Twitter today, literally just her walking down the corridor doing the typical Nikki Cross dance. I legitimately have no idea what's going on with Nikki, so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. One of the Zebra men would send Giovanni Vinci to the back tonight as his tag team partner Ludwig Kaiser took on Tommaso Ciampa. It would be, though, Giovanni Vinci coming back to the ring. The Zebra Man not having a backbone and enforcing his own rules would allow Trumper to be distracted and Ludwig Kaiser 
to pick up the victory tonight. Lots of people were mentioning on social media about the theme song that Ludwig Kaiser would enter with tonight. It's like a remix of Imperium's theme song. Apparently, it's been used in 2K23 for Ludwig Kaiser and for house shows. So maybe it's just the first time we've heard it on Raw. Zia Lee would knock out Indy Hartwell with that dangerous kick. She's like the third victim of it. One of the victims, Becky Lynch, has had enough, though. Coming out tonight, saying next week it's official. Becky versus Zia Lee. But Zia Lee is not done this week. As we got a social media clip posted by NXT today of Lyra Valkyria, the NXT Women's Champion, studying Zia Lee. She got a text message from Zia Lee who would invite her to a Warriors tea ceremony tomorrow on NXT. I have no idea what that is. But all I thought was you're really brave to open up an attachment while it's on a massive screen that everyone can see. That could have been boobs. Nia Jax and Raquel Rodriguez would come face to face backstage tonight. And very soon after, we'd find out that they're going to go one on one next week on Raw. That is going to be intense. I'm actually looking forward to a Nia Jax match. Who would have thought? Combo tickets for WrestleMania week, including SmackDown, Hall of Fame, NXT Stand and Deliver, go on sale this week included Raw After Mania. Did you notice how Michael Cole emphasised that? Hopefully we return to Raw After Manias of old. Gotta send love and best wishes to Ricochet, who last week on Raw sustained what is believed to be a concussion during the Intercontinental title number one contenders match. Hopefully he gets well soon. We'd see Ivar make his entrance tonight with a brand new CGI Viking ship. How cool did this look? Really, really nice. Ivar would go one-on-one -on -one with The Miz as advertised. Big Bronson Reed would come down to ringside, though, putting a seat at ringside, costing Ivar the match as he calls a distraction, allowing Miz to pick up the win. I like the fact Miz cheated to win here. Even though he's a face, he's still willing to do whatever it takes. That might be needed against Gunther. Big Bronson, though, would then lay out Ivar. So I'm assuming we're going to set up for Ivar versus Bronson Reed as well. Honestly, though, twice tonight, Bronson Reed had a stare down with Valhalla. He's definitely going to hit the tsunami on her, isn't he? While the men's tag team division was sort of arguing amongst themselves tonight, did we birth a new potential tag team of Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile? I'd be down for this. This would be pretty badass. I'm okay with it, and I have no idea what Tazawa's doing, but I'm all here for it. The power of Tazawa running wild on Monday Night Raw. The Drew Hill turn definitely saved this show tonight. Very solid, 7.5 out of 10 from me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications, never miss another upload. Like the video, share the video, and as always, I'll catch you next time. Peace!